Hi everyone, usually for my podcast I do a nice formal intro, let you know what's going on and a bit of outro as well, but something very special happened today, I got a chance to hang out with Grant Cardone, get him onto the podcast and you know there was no beginning, there was no end, it was just me and him chatting away, so without further ado, enjoy it, okay? Grant Cardone on the Spencer Lodge podcast. With that, so we've been in Miami six years, in LA probably, I was in LA 15 years. Why did you go to LA? If to you find, watch him, you'll know he hates it. <laughs> to, find, to, find, to, to meet my wife. <laughs> ah, okay. yeah, that, that's why I went. Is that the truth? Yeah, so, totally. You didn't want to become a movie star then? No. <laughs> it had nothing to do with it. Yeah. But you did that. But, okay, hold on a minute though. Before you were in LA, you were where exactly? I was in La Jolla, California, San okay. Diego. Okay. Beautiful. You, uh, just you, absolutely and, gorgeous. And you'd place. seen her? No, I didn't see it. I had never seen her. But you, and you, you tell the story. I knew, it. It I knew in my you, mind. It took I you knew a year mind. to get. To it took me 13 months to get her. But I was, I was in San Diego for 12 years. I had this Playboy house on the ocean. It was like I had the single guys, everything a single guy would want, I had going on. And, but, but I, was, I was not happy. I wanted a wife. I wanted a family. And, and so I knew that the woman I would marry was not in San Diego. Oh, really? I knew for sure she wasn't there. Shut up. For really? One hundred percent for positive. And she you, 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 you'd scoured the market then. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> Run <Right laughs> out of options. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so that I was San Diego onto LA. That's the nearest place. No, it was like no. I just I just knew she was. Don't. Yeah, don't. Yeah. So so I just knew she was there. I met her the first night I was there. The ran, first ran, night? Ran into her the first night I was there. And then 13 I was, months. I was, I was there two hours and met her. Maybe not even two hours. Like, and you but, just knew. You just like, knew. Oh, that's the chick right there. Started calling her. She wouldn't talk to me. You just knew. Hated my guts. Hated me. Like, despised me. <laughs> you were, like, it's my whole life, though. Most people, most people find me on YouTube or Instagram. They, they, the first thing, they, they don't like me the first, first time. I was with Jamie Foxx, actually. Uh, Last, week, last weekend, and, 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 and you, you could tell he had that same kind of thing with me, like a little bit of a grind at first, you know, just not quite buying it. Do you, in England, we have something called Marmite, okay? You know what Marmite is? No. So it's like a, like a beefy spread that goes on your toast and stuff. In, in Australia, they have Vegemite. Okay. And they say that I'm like Marmite. They either like me or they hate me. There's no one oh, that yeah, sits in the middle. Of that. People you, either yeah? like me or hate me, yeah. They, did, did, did you grow on people, though? Do I grow on them? Um, yeah, I, I, maybe. You know, I don't know. And when you get up and speak, I, I think I think what what happens with me is I think that I just wear I, I'm like water on rock. Like I, even though you don't like me, I just keep showing up anyway. And and water beats the rock. Like it just always wins. And so I just keep showing up regardless of the interest level of the audience or whether they like me or like the message. Like the money message that I deliver to people. They, 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 it, it irritates so many people because money's a very, very sensitive mm -hmm. subject. Like, it's so sensitive. I'm not, I'm not talking about poor people. I'm talking about people that have money. I, my message bothers them so much because it's confronting whether they're all right or not. Yeah. And particularly, like, high-producing salespeople, you know. High-producing salespeople, at first, at first, they have big aversions to me. Million-dollar producers. I was listening to... The, 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 the successful Wolf guy. guys. Oh, oh, the, the Wolf successful. Of Wolf, the Wolf of Wall Street is not a sales guy. He's a criminal. Totally. <laughs> so, so totally. I don't care what he says. Total criminal. Yeah. Come on, let's keep it real. How does he, how does he get to now do and sales And by the trading? way, until he cleans it up, he'll be a criminal. Yeah. Like, all he's got to do is pay everybody back, and then he wouldn't yeah. be a criminal anymore. So, and if he was here, I'd tell him to his face, dude. I Me mean, too. I, I've done things that are wrong. I've done things that were criminal, where I got something and didn't deliver anything. And I had to go clean that up for yeah. me to consider myself not a criminal. But he was talking about making million dollar producers. I'm like, dude, that, making a million dollar producers, like that's a crime by itself. Like, <laughs> you would never want somebody, you'd never want to inspire somebody to produce a million dollars. I find Just that to confront that they don't have any money now. Yeah. And then call them a top producer when they're still broke. Because, because and, and that message just grinds top producers. They're like, what do you mean, man? I'm making a, I was doing a meeting for uh, Northwestern Mutual big insurance company they were doing um, the average producer in the room was 980 a year US and gross income before tax yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and, and the top guy in the room was about five million dollars and my opening line was how do you guys even feel good about yourselves okay and, and they were like they were like huh so yeah so because I know that I remember when I was making a million dollars a year and thought I was the 
you know, I thought I was spotted dick. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you love that, didn't you? I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's your only, the, only, the only thing that you have in England worth eating. <laughs> so, so. Uh, Crumpets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I remember when I was making a million bucks, dude, and everybody started telling me how great I was. Oh, my God. My mom's like, oh, my God. My sister, oh, I can't believe it, man. And I started buying it. Yeah. And my production went down. I started thinking that was my, the wind in my sail. And you know, now I'm like, dude, that was so stupid. Me and Ryan talk about it all the time. Like, I walked into the Vatican the other day in Rome and I was like, man, now this is the right order of magnitude. I fly into this city, I wake up this morning. We, we got here at midnight last night, so I couldn't see anything. Mm -hmm. I wake up this morning, I look out my window, I'm like, these people are thinking right, mm -hmm. right size. But well, when, you, when you see developments like the Palm Island yeah, that yeah. they have here, what, what I always wonder is when they sat thinking about that, when the rulers of this country literally sat thinking about mm -hmm. that, what were they thinking? Because who's ever come up with an idea as, as crazy as that to say, yeah. right, what we'll do is yeah. we'll build a yeah. palm tree, yeah. huge palm tree that yeah. populates 500,000 people yeah. on an island out to sea. Yeah. Fancy that? And, and that's what, they, they built another one that's empty at the moment that's twice as big. Yeah. And so for me, it's always like, what were you thinking? And I came here 15 years ago when a lot They're of thinking we're going to do something so big that nobody else, nobody else can duplicate it. Nobody else will have the courage to do it. Nobody else will put money at risk. Yeah. We're going to create something so big, so massive, and it will become an unstoppable uh, location in the universe. Mm -hmm. So, and they will win because of that thinking process. Everybody else is going to lose because the think is so massive. This is exactly what the 10X rule was based on. The, that book was... Really, really, the book that made me was that book. And, and um, it, it's just based on the concept of Dubai. It's make something so big that no one can even like, they're like, eh, leave Dubai alone. I just yeah. have to be my little village. Yeah, I can't compete with that. I can't compete with yeah. it. And, and basically, uh, the, your competition surrenders. This is very apropos for, for real estate agents, too. Real estate agents, typically, they, they, they compete in the middle rather than saying, I want to take the top two people and I want to take them down. I'm going to literally take them off the charts. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do whatever they won't do. Not what they do do. I'm going to do what they will not do, refuse to do. Maybe they used to do, but don't do anymore. And I'm going to take those guys down. I want to ask you something because you and I have got some similar experiences and, and, and are born out of some frustrations, maybe. I just want to make sure I understand this. I, I think that the sales industry is, is the orphanage of business. Mm -hmm. If you want to get a job in sales, as long as you've got a pulse and you can say your name, you can get a job in sales. And, I, and that brings down the quality of salespeople across mm -hmm. many of the companies that you guys all very much know about. And if you want to go and learn to be an architect, there's a university that will take you. If you want to go and learn a bit to be a lawyer, you can. Mm -hmm. But where do you go to become a professional salesperson? Obviously, you've got your online platform. Right. Carter, I've got mine no. too. Carter, you, yeah, yeah, no. Carter University. Yeah, that's what what was the inspiration for that, though? Did but, you, were you frustrated yes, that there was no, totally. no one able to be taught? So, yeah. Well, well for, you know, when I was 20, 23 years old, I had had six career experiences in sales, and I was terrible at it. There was no education. There was n nobody told me anything. Like, like the reality is in, in, in this industry, it's not just the people we attract. It's the people that are training or not training the group, you know? Uh, we let anybody in, and then we don't train them, we don't educate them, right? One of the biggest problems sales companies have is actually the money they spend on, on recruitment uh -huh. and failed recruits. Yeah. You know, if you spend $5,000 recruiting someone, you recruit two people and you lose one of them, that's $10,000 on one person. And yeah. there's a huge amount of money spent here recruiting salespeople that just have got little or no experience yeah. at all. And you know as well as I do, it's not just about you know the knowledge. It's about the track record. It's about the attitude and all the other things that go together. When you put your when you put your university together, w were you frustrated that there was nowhere for people to go? I was frustrated when I was a salesperson because I, I I didn't I, I wasn't any good at it, but I couldn't get another job. So when you can't get another job, I lived in a town where they didn't have drivers. You didn't have drivers, and you didn't have bellmen, and you didn't have hotels, and you didn't have all this. You had two choices: you either Sold something or you work, worked in a refinery. Like I was watching those guys move dirt this morning. I, I, I said, you got to move my room. I, I told the hotel, I said, you, you got to move my room. I cannot look out this window and watch all this labor going on because that was my choice. And literally they're moving me to the other side so I can see the, 
the, the, the constructed part, not the parts of being constructed. Because my choices were either hard labor or be a salesperson. Mm -hmm. I wasn't good at either one of them. And oh. your first job selling was cars? Fill these hands. See, I, oh, yeah, that's I, I, I wasn't good at the, the construction work and I wasn't good as a salesperson. So uh, I lost uh, six sales jobs I lost. And it wasn't until I made a commitment to say, I'm going to get great at this game, which means I need an education. And I started going out and reading books and like you guys have, grabbing audio programs. Was it programs. Zig Ziglar? Uh, I mean, that who was, was Zig. It was, who, who was the first guy? The first guy I ran into was... Jim Ryan? No, it wasn't Jim. It was... No, it wasn't Brian. No, he's still alive. No, no, it wasn't Napoleon Hill. It was, uh, but but I've read all that stuff. I'll, I'll think of the guy's name here. Did something stick out for you though? Because I, you know, you yeah, must, you must yeah, have been yeah. like me. What, you bought what, the audio cassettes and the book, and you stuck them in the car, and you listened to the stuff back then. Yeah, Zig Ziglar dude, stuff. I listened to it. I Got to I have goals. I, I listened to it. Like I, I didn't listen to all the guys. Uh -huh. I, I, what I would do is go deep on one guy. I would go so deep on that one guy that I knew everything, every little thing. Like I didn't study seven, eight, nine people. I, 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 I know who Zig is and I know who Roan is and all that, but there was a guy that was doing some kind of training in the industry I was in. He had a program and that's all I studied was that program. I listened to that program 5,000 times. I mean, without exaggeration, in the morning, at night, in the morning, at night, over and over. I never got tired of it. I, I got to where I was discovering little nuances mm -hmm. and pauses and, and then I became a professional. I mean, it was like, and it was almost instant. I became, so, and it was, and, and so, you, was, you were in the car industry so, before? And well, after? I was in the auto, at that time, at 25, I was in the automobile industry, hated the industry, hated the business, uh -huh. didn't really like selling cars. Um, I was in the wrong vehicle. I knew I was frustrated because I knew I was in the wrong, I couldn't get rich there. It was impossible. And um, so when I started my business at 30, and I said, I'm going to go teach people a different way to sell things. Because one thing that happened and listened to the, all these trainers was there was a lot of trickery going on. Yeah. You know, there was a lot of these guys were just speakers. They I found never out made later. It. Never made it. Did they really people, never yeah. made it as salespeople. They went from salespeople to uh, sales presentations. Yeah. And this was, once I started looking into the space, a lot of charlatans, a lot of the earlier people we talked about, that never had businesses. Mm -hmm. They're like, I created more millionaires, but you don't have a million. Yeah. Like, where's your business, dude? That still exists today. Your, yeah. your only business is you, you hop around the planet speaking. Like, I, I was in, uh, what, what, where were we last year? Uh, London? And the guy says, you're, you're one of the top three speakers in the world. And the interesting thing is the other two guys are full-time speakers and you're not. I'm running 14 little companies, mm -hmm. you know, on the phones after this, we're, but we're doing deals. We're bouncing on a $200 million deal this morning. And that's what I'm doing every day. Now, it just so happens I, I love people. And I remember that young 25 year old Grant that wanted some help and direction. And so Cardone University was for, for a, way, a way for us to put my material on somebody's phone and be with little Grant before a deal, during a deal, after the deal, like we literally have people taking, excuse me one second, sir, going out, grabbing a phone, know where the material is, pop in, what would Grant do right now? Yeah. And that, that's the way that program was created. That's exactly, that's exactly yeah. how it should so, be because people have got such small memories as well. A lot of the time they forget the good stuff. Well, sure. Those sure. I forget, little... Look, I forget the, the good stuff. I forget what to do. You know, I forget you know, a recipe my mother taught me. Uh, I still, every, every year, that time of the year, I'm like, what, what, what was that recipe again? Let me go look at it. I, I don't use it enough to remember it. Whenever I talk to really successful people, and whether that's guys in your position or even billionaires that are even, even bigger, they all, all of them say, well, I'm just a sales guy, just like you, really. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I get such yeah, a great yeah, feeling yeah, from yeah. that. But yet yeah, these entrepreneurs or people that have built hugely successful organizations and businesses, they've got that whole kind of that yeah. sales gene. They, they get that it matters. Yeah. Yeah, I just so wish, I just so wish that that would be welcomed by the world. Yeah. Because I met a girl in a bar when I was 18 years old. She was hot, man. She was hot. And I stood there, no phones. That was a long time ago, yeah. Yeah, sure. And I looked across the bar at her for three hours. Well, I, didn't I, know drank, what I drank with... enough wine so that I got yeah. the courage to go and talk to her. And I went over to her and, and after three hours and I said to the girl, what's your name? Can I buy you a drink? All that kind right, of stuff. Right. And she told me her name and I asked her about her job. She said, I'm a receptionist at a law firm. I'm like, wow, that's fantastic. Tell me about it. I was really into it, yeah. This went on for 30 minutes. And uh -huh. she said, well, what do you do? And I went, I'm a salesman. And literally she went, 
why did I have to meet a salesman tonight? Oh my gosh. And it put a real, yeah, something yeah, inside of me, yeah, that yeah. put a chip on my shoulder forevermore to want to kind yeah. of defend and protect the rights of salespeople. Uh -huh. Because great salespeople should be respected and it's an industry where even if you're good, People, you know, going back all those years and even today, they just don't look it, uh, look upon it in the same positive way. Yeah, I, I think part of that though is, is you know, the salesperson needs to quit acting like a salesperson, needs to start acting like a businessman mm -hmm. or a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. And I know the marketplace is just not going to respect somebody that works for a commission. It's just not going to do it. And I mean, I'm working a deal right now with a guy that uh, I gave him the opportunity to go to every bank. Any bank he wanted to, uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which are mm -hmm. big GSA uh, government agencies uh, that lend money on multifamily apartments, mm -hmm. and any life insurance company. Mm -hmm. He had three weeks to do the deal. It was how much? It was a $140 million deal. It was a $90 million loan. It's going to pay him four hundred fifty grand or something. Mm -hmm. Some bank calls me last Monday. He, he, the guy took too long. He, 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 it's, the deal goes into fatigue, right? Yeah. When a deal takes too long, this is part of what salespeople say. The more time you spend with them, the better, better off you are. It's not true. That deal, that deal took too long to close. Some bank out of nowhere calls me last Monday and says, hey, do you have anything in South Florida we could provide you financing for? We really want to earn your business. And I told Ryan, I said, throw this deal at them. Mm -hmm. They come back with this freaking stupid offer. I said, dude, I'm taking it. Mm -hmm. what, about, what about these other guys? Yeah, what about them? Sorry. So Jesus, yesterday, last night I told the guy, I said, dude, I just got a better loan. If you can match it, he, I know you can't match it. There's no way you can get there. And he's like, oh my God, I can't believe this. This is the worst thing. This is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. I can't believe I'm being treated like this. I'm like, dude, you're a grown man. You're a grown man. Quit acting like this, okay? You're embarrassing yourself and the profession. Stop it. He's like, let's, let's have a breakup fee. I said, a breakup fee? You ain't a, my girlfriend. <laughs> this isn't a divorce, dude. You're not getting this deal. It's just be a professional. Act like a business person right now, not be completely worried about your, your commission. So I think the salesperson, the thing I would say is, and I made this mistake, for 20 years, I was a salesperson. From 30 to probably 50, 51 years old. I was running businesses, but acting more like a salesperson than I was a businessman. Mm -hmm. And when I made the shift and said, hey, you need to become a businessman now. You need to become a legitimate businessman. What does that mean? It means you're not worried about your commission now. You're spending money. You got, a, you got payroll. You're spending money on people. You're not complaining about employees. You're not trying to keep all the money for yourself. You're adding people. You're not complaining about time anymore. You're buying time. What do, what do billionaires do? They buy time. Okay, they, they don't have one person. They don't work 40 hours a week. They work 40,000 hours a week because mm -hmm. they buy time. That's, what, that's why Dubai is what it is. Mm -hmm. I got three people. I go to my room, I got three people going to the room with me. I'm like, who funded all this shit? <laughs> this is the <laughs> yeah, best deal on the planet, dude. For whatever I'm paying a night, I'm paying, I don't know what we're paying for that room. It's not cheap. I got one guy tending to me, another guy watching the guy tending to me, and another guy <laughs> watching the tender to the tender. Right. And another guy outside waiting to pick up the phone in case I need something. That, that's pretty cool and hard to compete with. So I would just tell the salesperson, quit thinking about your commission and start investing money in advertising, branding, marketing, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Like be a business. Brand yourself as a business, not a commission guy or a gal. You, you said something the other day about focusing on the U.S. market and then realizing there's so much outside. Yeah. OK. And that your message is now getting outside. Hence the reason you're traveling yeah. around. I was yeah. listening to you saying that. I find that really interesting. You see, you see, there's a commitment, right? My, my commitment preceded um, a salesperson wouldn't go out and buy a $45 million jet. Mm -hmm. he, might, he might charter it for him and his family to go to Vegas, mm -hmm. but he's not going to make a commitment a year and a half ago. You, I don't need the jet I have is built to go from Miami to here, not to go from Miami to New York, back and forth to Vegas. So it's built for international travel. That's why we invest in that, because we want to know the world. I wanted to meet you, man. <laughs> well, that's cool. Tell, tell, By the way, you shouldn't have taken three hours with that young lady. Well, she you was know a lot, what? Was she was a lot easier than that. She's a that. lot easier than that. <laughs> I got her. You got we, her. We huh? broke up, but okay. we got, I got her. A family won the lottery as well, believe it or not, some years later. Anyway, that's another story. Yeah. When, when did it, when did that penny drop for you? When, with the, social media? When, when you saw, oh, 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 when, I'll when, when did you go, exactly, this thing? Dude, I know, I know exactly where I was, what happened, okay? So it was 2008. Maybe, maybe it was 
maybe it was 2010. It could have been 2010. So I'm in my, I'm in my house in, in uh, Los Angeles. And some dude shows me Facebook. Okay, this is only nine years ago. Some guy shows me Facebook, and I said to myself, I know exactly where I'm sitting. I can literally feel the temperature right now, right? And I, and I said, I'm thinking to myself, I didn't say anything to him. I'm like, yeah, yeah, Facebook. And I'm thinking to myself, this is the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Stupid. The guy leaves, and then I have this thought. Dude, white what, man, you sound like some old man. You sound like some old man. You sound like some closed-minded, dumb old man that says, that's stupid. That's some new dumb thing, right? And, and then I started looking at it. And this is 2010, so the economy's been crushed. Mm -hmm. Not just the U.S. economy, the world is like being brought to its knees. Mm -hmm. my, two, two of my businesses were cut in half or worse. And the third one, uh, I had uh, a bunch of real estate, a bunch of apartment buildings. We thought it was a bunch, then it was like 600 units. Mm -hmm. So um, we're at 6,000 now, so. 10 times, 10x, right? So, <laughs> so we had 600 units. I couldn't move any of them because the, 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 the credit markets had frozen up. Had a $60 million lawsuit hit me at the same time. Oh, fuck. Like everything was falling apart. Just had a baby. So the whole world's just like, you know, when it rains, it pours, right? Yeah. And so I see this Facebook thing because I know right now I got to get known to the world because my market got, had gotten crushed. And, and I realized, oh, I didn't get the world to know me. I was dependent upon the U.S. And I was particularly dependent upon one industry in the U.S. And so I'm like, this Facebook thing, what's it cost? I started researching, what's it cost to use it? Nothing. How much can I use it? As much as you What's know. the catch? <laughs> uh, what can I say about myself? Anything. Uh, and I'm like, dude, this might be the thing, right? And then, then uh, we, I had been tinkering with YouTube, but I mean, we just, we just doubled down on, on those mechanisms. I think we had four people working for us at the time. We have 150 people in the real estate, 130 in, in the business. Like we had massive expansion because of social media. And you, you lent straight into it because I remember you talking about it at the time saying, guys, so those of you that are not really taking advantage of this, then you're missing a massive trick. But yeah. still, still, well, uh, because you not frustrate me. Yeah, yeah. Fifteen years on, people still aren't using it. Yeah, that's okay? right. Okay, yeah. and and I sit wondering what they they look at people like you and they see that it's gone and yeah, blown yeah, up. Yeah, you know, and Gary and other people. Yeah, yet they're still loath to, to well, get in front of a camera or start to produce content. Feel uncomfortable, worry about what other people yeah. say, like to keep things private, and I find that really frustrating. But I mean, you know, why would you do do any of this if you can't make money doing it? So like that's a, that's a little bit of the problem I have with your buddy there. You know, he's your brother. Gary. Yeah. 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 No so problem. like he he's like I'm gonna go on here and I'm not I don't need to make any money from anybody. Well well who's taking care of you? Mm -hmm. Like that's not the life I live. The life I live I have to take care of the bills. I, I don't know who's taking care of Gary, but it's clearly it's got to be somebody else because in the world I live in I got two kids I got to feed. I got 129 employees. I got 150 in the real estate. Look if it don't if it I'm not gonna spend time where Time doesn't become money. You know, the saying is time is money. So if time is money, that's an ancient saying, right? It's like, you, I can go anywhere on planet Earth and say time is, and it doesn't matter whether I'm in China or here or Louisiana, time is money. If time is not money, then I want to monetize. If you're in real estate, you got to monetize. So we, we raised, uh, what did you guys raise? How much did you raise? 160 million USD. In how long? Four years? Four years. We raised $200 million in 20 months with Facebook and Instagram. Okay, I've never taken anybody to a restaurant. Have we done one restaurant meeting? I've not done one restaurant. I've not, hey, meet me at the restaurant. Let's go to the bar. I have not met, done any kind of little settings with six and eight people at a time. I go on Facebook. I just, I just did, let, let me see my phone, Kayla. So I posted this this morning on Instagram. They let me post it too. Crazy, <laughs> right? I, I feel like I'm back in England when it was really <laughs> medieval. Yeah, right. When it was like you could do anything. Now you can't do anything there. Just <laughs> okay. Um, they, so, there so is, it is like that though. Huh? I think it is like that. Though. Yeah. What? That whole kind of like. Yeah, yeah. Like, like this morning I said, hey, in real estate you show off the assets, not the biceps. I take a picture of myself showing off my biceps. 
right? And then, then, I, then, I, then I show all these properties. I said, look, in real estate, you show off your biceps, not your, I know this will raise money. I guarantee you, I'll raise three or 400 grand off this one little, I didn't pay, pay a penny for this. Okay, there's no promotion. I hadn't hit the promote button yet. Show some real estate that I'm buying right here. Maybe you guys can see it right here, so you see what I'm saying. And and um, so it's basically a picture of Grant giving it the giving it the gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These, yeah and then yeah. some posters and some developments. So so the point the point of that is, you know, I can do that as much as I want. I pay nothing. I can say anything I want. Literally say almost anything I want. I could say I'm the best over and over and over again. And the best can't say I can't say it. Yeah. You know, it's just how much will I communicate it? How much will I talk, tell the public who I am? With these shows that you do, yeah. Young Hustlers and all that other stuff, do you really enjoy doing them? You know, do I enjoy doing them? Yeah, I mean, you know, once I'm doing them, I b the whole way over there. <laughs> like, <laughs> do I, did I enjoy working out this morning? Yeah, once I got down there, but, but I didn't enjoy on, on the way over there. I don't, I don't enjoy 90% of the stuff I do, I don't want to do. I'm coming to this interview today. Who is he? What is he? Why are we doing this? You didn't know who I was. Yeah, I do now. I do now. But you know what? I showed hey, up anyway. I, I do stuff. I do, again, again, I do stuff I don't want to do every day. Yeah. And then, then I lean into it all the way. And then I'm like, okay, okay, I don't want to do it, but I got to do it. And I'm going to do it. And even if I don't have to do it, sometimes I do it. Tell me about, tell me about your health and the future. Yeah. You're, you're, you're a young guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who's, who's got a few years on, but you're a young yeah, yeah, guy. You yeah, seem to be yeah. getting younger. Yeah. And you seem to be getting more enthusiastic. And you seem to be getting well, more when, when it, when it, when it does, does it, it's good for your mental health. <laughs> success is extremely good for, for, I believe this. I believe success is the best medicine a person can have. Guys, have you got any questions you'd like to ask, Grant? You're sitting here all enthusiastic. What questions you got? Uh, well, I would like to ask, what, like, when was the first time that you found like Grant Cardone, the epiphany that made Grant Cardone what it is today? What was that tick that changed you to who you are today? There must have been that moment. Yeah, I don't think it's one moment. I mean, it's, it, you know, like I'm really discovering who I am right now. Yeah. And, and um, our goal is to take the real estate company to 10 billion. I have like... What's that now? 1.2. And you want to take it to 10? Yeah. By when? Uh, I don't really have a date on it. I don't really believe the whole date thing. Like a goal without a date is just a dream, whatever. I've never had dates on any of my goals. But 10's where you want to get to. So, so yeah, I want to get to, $10 billion makes me as big as like a Blackstone REIT, which will be, that, that, that would be a big, that would be a monster achievement in my life, right? And I, I know that I can do this now. I mean, I know how, I'm, I'm finally for the first time in the right vehicle. Real estate is a massive, it's an unbelievable vehicle, you know? If you're on the right side of the game. And the right side of the game is to be owning real estate, not selling it. So you never had a moment, but there was this, you just slowly got better and more confident. I, I don't understand more. why you guys don't buy more of this stuff. Why we don't buy more real estate? Why, buy what you're selling and sell oh, it. Oh man, that's one of my pet hates. People Dude, that sell shit, they don't buy themselves. Huh? And people that are selling stuff, they don't buy themselves. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I don't I understand don't why you guys aren't accumulating real estate. Like... You know, you're selling something and you're not accumulating. If you're selling drugs, yeah, you probably don't want to use those. <laughs> but you really just want to be in a different industry, right? Like what Jay-Z did, right? These guys, look at these guys. They want equity, man. They don't want money, right? They want equity of the property. They want equity. They're like, look, don't give me money, dude. I want, to, I want a piece of the deal. Warren Buffett, he wants pieces, chunks. He's not buying stocks. Warren Buffett's not a stock investor. Warren Buffett is... He buys chunks of companies that produce cash flow. So that, that's, you know, for the first time in my life, I am not so worried about how much money I make now as, as I am, um, hey, I want to accumulate equity <clears throat> positions and stuff that can leave a legacy. And also, I want to be able to do some good while I'm there. So I don't know when that's happened or, you know, I think I just keep showing up for stuff and start, keep discovering myself and keep challenging myself. The fact you've got as big as you've got on social and you've got it's now a, a global reach as far as I'm concerned, that you just have to, you just keep pushing that because yeah, the, I mean, I the, think the, I, world, the world, the world, is, like yeah. the corners of the world, yeah, know you. It's not often. There's not often. There was one person at your company that I know that she's like who? Yeah, <laughs> but no, very, but look, very, look, very look, rarely. All we do every all we do at my house is nobody knows me. You think a bunch of people know me? We think no one knows me. Interesting. Tony, got a question? Um, 
something I'm feeling it myself. Like I cannot find the balance between when you need to shut off from work and when you need to be full on it. So basically, in Dubai, we have a huge competition. We need to work easy, 15, 16 hours. Yeah. But what's coming to me recently, I'm feeling it. Like you know, after a few months, you need a break, you need a vacation. You go to the vacation, you cannot leave the phone, you cannot leave your email, you cannot yeah. leave anything. Like mentally. You're still in Dubai. Physically, you're trying to take a vacation, but yeah. you're not doing it. Yeah. So yeah. how do you find the balance between your... Quit looking for it, dude. Quit looking for the balance. Leave it. You're not winning enough. You're not winning enough. You got you to gotta win more. You, you, need to, you need to win more. You need to win more. Is that 40,000 hours? That's what he said. Yeah, yeah. You need to win more, dude. You need to win more. Like, like, like. Do you feel like you need a break? Mentally, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, because yeah. you're, you're not winning. You're not winning. Like, when you're winning, you don't need a break from winning. But what's winning for you? There's an addiction huh? in that. I would say that. There's what? There's an addiction, addiction in winning. Oh, totally, totally. Every everybody here's. Get tired of it. Dude, I, I I am a total, a total addictive quality. I want more of everything that's good for me. Like, give me give me more of it. I'm a junk out on it. It's not good for you. You want more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but well, then, then that's where discipline comes in and says, no, I don't I don't I don't want to do the stuff that's yeah. not good for me. I want to spend the time. But look, if I if I'm running hard, if I'm busy, <laughs> I don't get I don't go do stuff that's not good for me if I'm running. Mm -hmm. I do stuff that's bad for me when I take breaks, right? When I, when, when I got too much time, uh, then, then I start getting seduced by all the other distractions on the planet. I'm running from deal to deal to deal. Day goes by, I'm like, where did day go by? Oh, it's 16 hours, man. Wow, where'd it go? Because I was, it's the time in between when I'm not winning. So I, I don't seek the balance and I don't, have a, I don't have anybody in my ear telling me I work too much. Like I've gotten rid of all those people, the girlfriends, Family members, you work too much. You need to enjoy your life. Life is to be lived. All the co the coworkers around me saying, "Dude, what's it for?" Oh, anyway, the people sending me the little bullshit articles. You know, love your life. Love yourself the way you are. I don't love myself the way I am because I know I can be more. Huh? Tell us about your last holiday. Maybe that would answer his question. Yeah, my last holiday was. Uh, dude, when was my last Skin. holiday? Yeah, yeah. Well, we went skiing. We did 35,000 people in a, in a stadium in Miami, and then I, I went on a ski trip. That was a okay. I worked the entire time I was there. Because in the U.S., as long as I'm on location, yeah. it's tax deductible. <laughs> <laughs> and if I'm on vacation, it costs me money. <laughs> so, I'm a, I, dude, we work everywhere I go, but everybody around me is working. The whole team is like, we're working. I'm coming to Dubai. I'm coming here for the – I'm not coming here to ride camels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right? I can put a VR headset on and go ride a camel. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm here to meet people. We're not here to do business. We're here to meet people and make relationships and get known mm -hmm. so that you, this region knows me. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I'm not real to people on YouTube. I'm just on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I get here, now I'm real. Mm -hmm. First thing I did when I landed here, my Twitter feeds hits. Grant Cardone lands in Dubai. And I do a video. And I pop it there. I didn't do that for my fans and followers. I did that for people that don't know me. Mm -hmm. Uh, tagged at my, my uh, uh, Dubai, uh, hashtag my Dubai. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, pop the hashtag, yeah. You know, and then, and, then, and then I'm hoping people will be like, who's the dude? Just another, on, well, you, when you spoke about because you had your 10X Growth Con recently at the, the yeah. stadium in yeah. Miami. Russell Brunson on his podcast, if you listen to his Marketing Secrets podcast, uh -huh. he talked about some of the problems with sound yeah. that were going on in the stadium. You'd gone from... Uh, a sizable event to a massive event. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, courage to go and do that stuff. But when you did that, was that, in your experience, a step too far? No, in, in, absolutely in not. Of, I didn't know Russell said that. By did the you not way. listen to the podcast? No, I didn't. Oh, he's a. Uh, yeah. Well, he said no. He, he said he, I, I had to speak slower. Yeah, so but he didn't. He didn't speak back. slower, and he used a headset and was told not to. Okay. I told sides. him to put a microphone in his hand, hold it to his face, but that's not his little deal. So he couldn't, he couldn't break stride with him. Like, bro, you're in a can. You're in a big can. There's yeah. a big metal can, mm -hmm. okay? So you can go do whatever you want up there. But if you go up there and do your speed talk, you got sound bound. It's got to travel. It's got to travel, I don't know, how many yards? 600 yards? Like, it was like, mm. across the big state. you got to make the adjustment. Nobody else had the problem he had. He I had really, the problem. He had the problem. 
So that's what he's not taking responsibility for. I hope you see this, Russell, by the way. Okay. Sorry, Russell, just dropped so, you in it, mate. So, so, so uh, you know, you got to make adjustments. It's a, which it's a great lesson for everybody, by the way. You have to make adjustments, right? Right. You, you guys have all been in front of a customer where your pitch just didn't work with them, and I have to make adjustments, and I got to follow up. Yeah. The pitch I made with my wife didn't work. For 13 months. Well, it didn't uh, well, it was work. You know, but you got to say, did it work or not work? She didn't like me. That worked. That is a level of working, because before that she didn't even know me. Okay. So I've moved a long way from I don't know you to I don't like you. That's a huge move with yeah. a customer. Yeah. Right. So the problem in real estate is in real estate. You know, I see real estate agents just qualify people as not able to buy anything, take them off the list. You know, I, I have not always been in a position to buy a plane, but but. If people would have been treating me like I was a Gulf Stream, a new Gulf Stream buyer when I was 30 years old, you know, so it took it took how many years, Ryan? How, how old was I when I bought the plane? Three, two years ago. So, it took me it took me uh, it took me 29 years to buy that plane, dude. But you know what? I've been to the, I've been to a lot of places on this planet where people treated me like I was nobody. And and it's just a good lesson, man. Treat people like they're they're always somebody, you know. And then maybe they grow up and become somebody. Right, what's it like to work for Grant? Well, I mean, it's, it, it's been a whirlwind for me, right? How long you worked for him for? Yeah, so I, went, I, I, worked, I started working for Grant five years ago, and I was an airline pilot working for United before this. Uh -huh. And so I knew what I wanted, right? I wanted to be around somebody who was growing, developing, growing a real estate company. And then he said, hey, I'm getting a, a, a private airplane. So for me, it was two wins, right? I can go and fly for Grant. You found me on YouTube. So I found him on YouTube, called him was there the next day for an interview and I've been with him now for five years 330 days a year and I mean look he's awesome I mean on YouTube he's this great personality in real life he's even better he's got a great family uh, his ethics are in I mean he, he's he's like you know, we joke about this all the time like Grant I see a lot of myself in Grant and Grant's my role model you know like like he's the guy that I want to be and, 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 and he shows that to the whole world like he's just an open book like when I work for him, I don't feel like he's hiding things. I don't like, like he wants to do good. Like this whole Cardone Capital thing. Like he wants to do everything I hear. Let's do it for the investors. Let's do this for the investors. Everything comes to the investors first. And that blows me away because everybody in my past was like, hey, how do we get rich? How do we do this? How do we, do? it's like all selfish, you know? So it's been great. That's cool. Isn't and, it? and just, you know, this guy went from making 125 grand a year to making 30,000 bucks a year. He took a job, he took a step way down. Like he went from making, being a pilot with his little wings on captain, and- Captain. Captain, yeah. okay. And, uh, <laughs> you have to get that. And all the flight, <laughs> flight attendee, uh, they attendant. They I mean, they, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. It's just real, yeah. What's his name? And so, <laughs> so, so, right, he, so he gets all the attention being the pilot, right? And all the, the 200 passengers, are like, oh, he's the captain of the plane. He gets yeah. to take, to being in a cold call facility, making calls. Hey, I'm Ryan with Cardone Capital, or in that case, it was he was calling on uh, business owners. And terrible job. There's nothing about that job anybody would like. Mm -hmm. I've done it. Mm -hmm. It's just not That's a great it. job, right? right? But he was willing to do it. Mm -hmm. And he's willing to do anything. Hey, hey, Ryan, pick up the food, okay? Uh, whatever it takes, man, he's been willing to do. So he went from that phone calls to being a pilot on the plane to like, dude, you're more valuable than me, a pilot. Get out of the cockpit, okay? You're gonna come to the back of the plane. We're looking at real estate all the time. He, he's running a billion dollars worth of real estate with me. Like we're, we're both learning stuff we don't even, we've never done before. So it's a big, big, big thing for him because a lot of people wouldn't take that pay cut. Mm. You know, they'd be it like, says, you it says, it says a lot for someone. Yeah, totally. You got to pay me another hundred. I need 150 grand. It's a lot, it's a lot, it's a huge problem with a lot of people. Like, most, I was most this, people. huh? Most with people. most people. And, and that just really teaches me, man, don't follow money, follow the opportunity. I followed money the first 50 years of my life and I missed a lot of opportunities. And, 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 I, and, and had, I been, had I been in the right vehicles the whole time, chasing, again, my buddy over there, Gary, that doesn't want anybody to make money. I'm like, this is stupid. It's stupid. He's like, I said, Gary, what's what's better off? Somebody making forty grand from home or forty grand for somebody else? He's like, oh, they should definitely stay at home and make forty grand. I said, no, dude, making forty grand is not good for anybody. Mm -hmm. Nobody should make forty grand, no matter what location you're at. 
So, and that's my premise. People need to make a lot of money. You guys need to make a fortune. So you got to find the right vehicle, and you got to never be satisfied with, I'm going to make a fortune here. This is, what, this is what these people here are doing. The wealthy, I'm not talking about rich people. I'm talking about the conglomerates, mm -hmm. the multinationals, the corporations. First rule for these people, promote, promote, promote. You know, what, what Dubai's created is just a massive ongoing promotion. Mm -hmm. They, 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 they had a development here, the, the World Islands. I don't know if you heard about that. So we've got the World Islands here. It's the, the map of the world. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. And the marketing, strat uh, the marketing promotion was Dubai puts the world on the map. Yeah. And I thought, what a, yeah. uh, a great promotional thing. Okay, a couple of questions before we finish. Can I just ask one last one? Sorry for my sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're known as the money man, Mr. 10X and all that. Would you, how do you want to be remembered in like, your legacy in 30 years? Like, how do you want to be yeah, seen? Dude, I, I want to be remembered as the guy that would help anybody. Like, you know, to me, it doesn't matter who, who a person is or, you know, I, I'll tell you a story. A billionaire gave me a 20, uh, 20 million bucks once. I, I love this story because it kind of represents who I am. He gave me 20 million bucks. His, his accountant guy, uh, who's a very, very intelligent guy, you know, he, but, but he didn't understand the, what, I was, what I was investing in, comes in, does some accounting work, asks about this and that for the billionaire guy. And I said, man, me, you don't know what you're talking about. Tell, tell the other guy that, that, like, this isn't what I signed up for. You guys keep asking too many questions. I'm just going to give you the money back. Guy comes back three days later. Blah, blah, blah. Da, 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 da. I'm like, hey, here's the money back. I gave him the $20 million back, okay? Well, the billionaire got so pissed off. He's like, like wow, I can, nobody's ever giving me my money back. I said, well, there's your money back. I don't want it. I don't want it. That, that's really who I'd like to be remembered by. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna choke on twenty million dollars, and lose control and freedom of my life and my own self-respect. Mm -hmm. So, and the only way you can do that, because particularly if you're trying to take care of your family, right? If I depended on that money, if that was the only place I could get money for, I'd probably have to just eat it, and and take the, you know, listen, yes sir, okay. But the only way to actually be in ethics in your life is to keep your funnel so full. So full, have so much going on over here that I can say, hey, dude, stay out of my life. Mm. And I think a lot of people never get themselves in that position of so much freedom that they're like, I don't need to deal with this. You know, that, that if you've watched Billionaires, the, the F you money, mm -hmm. you know, they're like, yeah, that, that, that's what that is. I, I, I have enough going on. I have enough flows going over here that I can cut off this one flow. And it's actually good for me to say no to that flow. And a lot of real estate agents can't do that. They're, they're doing stuff they don't want to do that will never pay them, by the way, because they're lazy on creating all the flows over here or they're, they're resisting making investments in people. You know, they're just, again, going, it goes back to be thinking like salespeople rather than I'm going to think like a conglomerate. Mm -hmm. Greg, you have a question? Yeah. Has there been a sort of an investment or standout mistake that you've made where you thought, that was close to that again. Totally, totally. <laughs> um, should I tell them about the drone? Uh, yeah, go ahead. So, so, <laughs> so I, I, I'm, a, I'm an extremely playful person. Like, I, I like to have fun more, probably more than anything. Like, I, I love jumping out on people, scaring them. I love pranks. You're probably a prank guy. <laughs> um, he comes over to my house one day, and then I'll get to the investment thing, but it almost being a it almost ended up being a terrible investment. So he's got this drone. I said, hey, Johnny, we're on the 33rd floor. I said, take it off the 33rd and fly it from Off the balcony. Off the balcony. And he's like, no, it's too, it's too small up here, man. I said, are you any good? He's like, I'm the best in the world. <laughs> I said, if you're the fucking best in the world, you can fly it off my damn, off my damn deck, right? Sure enough, I talk him into it. He lights it up. It hits the ceiling, okay? Yeah. It goes into whatever. It, it, it gets killed, right? And it starts dropping 33 floors, and there's people down at the pool. Ooh. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm about to lose everything. I've, like, I'm gonna end up in a $100 million lawsuit here for killing somebody. With a drone. Luckily, the drone falls into the pool, and I said, that would have been the worst investment I ever made. <laughs> so now, on the real estate side, the mistakes I've made with real estate are, I shouldn't have sold anything the whole time. We've probably sold, I don't know. What percentage seven. have you sold? Well, we have a billion two under management. We probably sold, I probably stole 
four, five, six hundred million dollars worth of real estate. So what was you thinking when you sold it then? I needed money. Just you needed money. I needed money. I needed, I needed, I needed this money because I could take that money and go buy some more real estate. So it's just what I needed to do. Now, I only needed to do that because I wasn't willing to go raise money. I never wanted to raise money the whole time. I've been doing real estate quietly for 30 years. We've only been raising money for 20 months. I should have been raising money the whole time. 20 months? 20 months, dude. I didn't raise any money. 90, 95% of my portfolio is mine. There's only 5% of it's owned by investors. I didn't know that. Is that out of fear of just not getting into a hole with us? No, because I listened to a bunch of ignoranuses that said, don't raise money. It's going to be a problem. Don't. And I'm like, I should have listened to the banks and Goldman Sachs and Blackstones and the guys that raise money because they raise money. Yeah. Oh, Grant, you don't, you, if you raise money, raise it only from wealthy people. That's not what Fidelity does or HSBC. They take money from everybody. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's some little things that we're all told by our family and our friends and the people that love us that is so wrong. You know, because if, if, if people would just start studying, rather than me studying Zig Ziglar, people should be studying the banks mm -hmm. and the Coca-Colas and the Microsofts. Mm -hmm. The reason I bought my jet was because Coca-Cola buys jets, not because my buddies. You know, Gary wants to fly a coach, he can fly a coach. F it, I ain't flying a coach, you know? So I just need to go produce enough so that I can put my family on that plane. This goes back to the balance thing, dude. If you want real balance, you gotta have money. That way I can put my family on that plane and I can have them homeschooled on that plane and I can have them with me when I wake up in the morning in Dubai. I can spend time working here during the day and still go home and sleep with my wife and my kids. So I'm buying balance. Will you, when you get to know Dubai, will you now buy in Dubai? I don't know. I mean, the only thing I'm- What's your gut telling you? You just landed well, here, you just sit here. I'll you, come you, here, this is what I know. This wow. is what I, I knew when I got off the plane last night, I said, I'm gonna come here many, many times. Is this your first time? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I knew it as soon as I got off the plane. I could like, I got off the plane, put my foot on the ground and said, I, I guarantee, I'm coming back here many, many times. Try, try August next time. Yeah. August. <laughs> yeah, 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 maybe not. But, <laughs> But, but also the whole region, not just Dubai. Like, like to me, all, the whole region is interesting to me. Everything. Yeah. Maybe not. It's, it's just very is. different. Yeah. It's fine. Very, very, very different. Yeah. The lost opportunity. Yeah. It's gotta be, there's, there's gotta be, like, I, you know. Yeah. Like, they tell me India, India, they say, man, India is such a hard place. I'm sorry, I said, yeah, but I'm interested. Yeah. You know, so. A million people, so. Yeah. It's gotta be something going yeah. on there. Chris, you got a question? Who was your role model? Well, I've had a lot of them, man, because, because a lot of them have helped me know what not to do. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I watch successful people, and then I've never asked anybody to mentor me. Like, I just watch them. So, and I watch what they do that, that, that uh, mostly it's kind of a reverse kind of mentor thing, what I don't want to do. You know, a really bright guy that, Ended up drinking too much and gambled everything away. And uh, he attracted great people. This guy had the ability to attract unbelievable talent. I've never seen anybody attract so much talent. And they all left. And then I looked at that and said, hey, what's wrong with that guy's formula? He didn't have any place for him to go. And so he, he, he was bright. He was smart. He was like, he had, you know, but I'm like, okay, so I need more than one company. I can't have one company and keep great people because this one company, if it doesn't get big enough and he comes in, he's gonna look around and say, dude, this place ain't big enough for me. There's not enough money here. So the vehicle, again, it goes back to the vehicle. Vehicles have to be big enough for not just me, but for, to feed other people. All right. I, you got a question? Yeah, yeah, I just got a quick one. So, You've obviously reflected on a long career, right? And you must use a lot of the things and your experiences to guide you as you move forward. It would be a, a waste of learning if you didn't. Yeah. If you had the option to go back to any point in history, because you've moved at such an incredible pace, take a moment to a younger grant, whether it be a year ago or 30 years ago, stop and say, either congratulate that person or console him. Yeah. Which one would you choose and what would be the occasion at that point man so many there'd be so many reflection points like probably 35 years old because I was I was I was uh semi-successful you know and, and I I was patting myself on the back I mean there's but there's so many places 
I wouldn't. I, I don't think I would have patted myself on the back along the way. I, I, I would have definitely said, "Dude, what are you doing?" What was that moment? The highest of all of them. Oh God, there's so many painful moments, dude. What's like knee jerk saying? Uh, you know, th th that 35, 36 years old, and I was just resting. I should be a multi-billionaire today, but but I wasn't thinking big enough the whole time. My my, and, my success created an arrogance in me. Yeah, totally. And totally. an ego. Yeah, yeah. And I had to yeah. come down crashing yeah. to earth with a bang to realize that that yeah. wasn't a great characteristic. It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't such an ego thing for me. It was, it was, it was, I had so many people telling me I was doing good. You know, whether I, I was a young salesperson and I reached the top of the board and I'm beating everybody. Oh my God, he's so good. He's so good. And I, and I just kept buying this, the wind. And I'm like, what, so what I'm doing good? It doesn't matter. It wasn't what I could do. I just got lost in the moment. And I got involved in a bunch of counseling and, and uh, I had people telling me that I had problems and I had ADD and ADHD and I was bipolar and that I had a disease and that I, was, I needed medication. I, I, I bought it all, dude. I, I, I believed it and started doing all this introspection stuff. It was complete bullshit. Like there was nothing. The only self-awareness I needed was I had tremendous potential. I believe this about all people. The only thing I needed to be aware of was I have phenomenal potential. And the only thing I should have done is blow on that potential and be surrounded by people that said, dude, you can do more, not less. You can do more, you can do more, you can do more. Everybody should be telling themselves, you can do more. And go to Dubai to do more. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much yeah. for coming. Thank you, man. Show, you guys, great, great fantastic. job, man. Yeah. We got to do this. We got to do this with the panel and everything, man. This yeah, is it's awesome. Man. It's nice. It's nice to get. Let through. the production crew get involved with the great <laughs> questions too. That guy went deep on me, trying to turn into Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> My boy trying, trying to build some Oprah shit over me. I knew that question came out. <laughs> uh, going Dr. Oprah. Phil on us, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, who would like a photo with Grant? Yeah, let's go. Thank you guys. Thank you guys.